Hello everyone, my name is Gerard Dragon Rider Khalil, but most of you know me here on YouTube as The Completionist. And welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Month Part 6. We've explored almost every aspect of Gaia at this point, except for one, the future. Or rather, what events take place after the epic tale of Final Fantasy VII. Two stories actually happen, one is a film and one is a game. And today, we'll be tackling just the film, so sit back, relax, and enjoy as I basically rip apart and spoil for you the main story of Advent Children Final Fantasy VII. While there isn't a lot behind the history of the film, Advent Children was originally released in 2005. Initially, it was designed to be a 10-20 to 20 minute short film that would focus on the children trying to relay a message to Cloud about the return of Sephiroth, but as they started painting their canvas, they started to fall in love with Gaia again and again, and they really wanted to give it the real revisit that it deserved. The graphics in this are insane, and if you're watching it on Blu-ray, your minds will be blown. The title, Advent Children, alludes to the next generation, but it doesn't only represent one specific group of children. Several years after the release of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, Square Enix released a director's cut version called Advent Children Final Fantasy VII Complete Edition. This edition featured even more beautiful visuals, as well as an additional 20 minutes added to the story. Released on Blu-ray and DVD in 2009, this marked the end of the Advent Children saga. For for the sake of time, we'll just be doing a brief overview of the story. Today's film analysis will focus on the main theme of forgiveness. In the previous games, we've explored legacy, loss, and identity. Yet with forgiveness, things have changed. We've gone from a cloud who rose to the occasion, a cloud that lost himself, and a cloud that has returned to being himself once again, but disappointed with who he actually ended up becoming. What kind of cloud will we see this time? A confident one? A strong one? Let's find out. Before we begin, we are shown some Japanese text that reads, To those who love this world and found company therein, this reunion is for you. This is a shout out to all the fans out there who've supported the series for 10 years. Two years after the events of Final Fantasy VII, we are in a different world. Gaia has changed to a depressing landscape where we face a brand new evil, Geostigma. See, when Cloud defeated Sephiroth, Sephiroth and Genova were absorbed into the life stream. And therefore, they ended up poisoning the world with Geostigma, an alien matter that tries to destroy the immune system. The stigma at first doesn't actually seem too deadly, but the body overcompensates and ends up killing itself because of its presence. It plagues present-day Gaia, including our hero Cloud. Anyone remember the reunion from Final Fantasy VII? Well, gear up for reunion number two. Sephiroth and Genova have three new remnants, or in this case, Advent Children, that represent their evil future. Kadaj, the leader, represents the evil quality of Sephiroth. Lowe's, the dopey brute, represents Sephiroth's strength and Yazoo represents Sephiroth's charm. These three evil bastards are the antagonists of the film, and on the surface, they're kind of weak. They're really just less scary versions of Sephiroth, but more on that later. These three remnants take control of all the children in Midgar that are infected with Geostigma and use them to empower Genova and Sephiroth. The only thing stopping them from global domination? Genova herself. They must find Genova so they can become whole again. Cloud's struggle throughout the film is for forgiveness and acceptance. Since he's become the new version of himself, he's unhappy about the death of the two most important people in his life, Zack and Aerith, thus creating a depressing, apathetic Cloud. Cloud believes that he deserves the worst done to him because of his inability to save Aerith and Zack. The notion of forgiveness from Zack and Aerith follow Cloud throughout the film. They lovingly reach out several times to assure him that it wasn't his fault and that they do forgive him. But this is a film, so it does take several moments for Cloud's arc to go from weakling to the confident hero we all love and know. And although Cloud seeks forgiveness from them, he also seeks forgiveness from his peers. Tifa is incredibly concerned that he's not the same man that fought Sephiroth two years ago. In two years time, it seems that Midgar has become a more depressing place, let alone Gaia as a whole. But Cloud gets by with a little help of his friends, and again fights the good fight. The old gang is back and looking for new ways to restore the planet back to its original state, including Rufus Shinra. Thought he was dead? 
Turns out he's not. And like Cloud, he's trying to atone for his sins, wanting to rebuild the world for the better with his personal army, the Turks. Obviously, Shinra no longer exists, but they still try to make the world a better place by keeping Genova away from the remnants. But what happens if they do get a piece of Genova? What happens if the bad guys win? What if in Kadaj's final moments after Cloud whoops his ass, he grabs Genova's head and assimilates it? My reunion that you're dying to watch. Good to see you, Cloud. Son of a doodly, he's back! Sephiroth is here, he's returned, and holy crap, he's even more powerful than before. Sephiroth uses all his newfound power to summon the Geostigma to consume the planet so that he and Genova can continue their quest to dominate the universe. What we have here is one of the coolest battle sequences ever. Cloud and Sephiroth going back and forth, really giving it their all. This is what the movie is really about, people. Sephiroth versus Cloud, the rematch of the century. Let's get ready to rumble! Back, 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 back. Sephiroth overpowers Cloud and stabs Cloud in a familiar fashion in what we saw at Nibelheim. Sephiroth mocks Cloud as he throws him to the floor, exclaiming that he has nothing to fight for. Everything is hopeless for Cloud until a familiar voice is heard. So what if it looks hopeless? If it were me, I still wouldn't give up. Embrace your dreams, and whatever happens, protect your honor as soldier. Well, okay, you never made soldier, but it's what's in here that counts. Zack. Well, you need a hand with him? You already beat him once, didn't you? This should be a cinch. Yeah. Cloud, you know what I told you. That's right. I am your living legacy. <laughs> huh. I pity you. You just don't get it at all. There's not a thing I don't cherish. Zack's conversation with Cloud suddenly cleanses any and all remaining self-deprecating doubt that he had and gives him the strength that he needs to push on. Cloud then dishes out everything he's got in Omni Slash 2.0, the ultimate attack to send Sephiroth back to hell from whence he came. Stay where you belong, in my memories. Upon Sephiroth's defeat, Kadosh reverts back to his sickly form, waiting for death to take him. Kadosh thinks that he hears Mother's voice telling him that he'll be okay, but it's actually Aerith. It begins to rain. The rain is the livestream's way of washing the planet of the Geostigma, giving life and purity back to the people. Everyone rejoices, as it seems everything is coming to a happy ending. Looks like you spoke too soon, buddy. Lowe's and Yazoo catch up with Cloud to avenge Kadaj, and in one last sacrificial attempt, Cloud clashes with the two of them only to create a massive explosion. As the dust settles, Cloud once again has a flash meeting with Aerith and Zack. Cloud asks if that's his mother, and Aerith and Zack joke that Cloud's way too old to adopt. They indicate that they don't have room for him to join them in heaven. 
or wherever the live stream is based. Cloud finally realizes that he never needed forgiveness from Zack or Aerith to begin with. He's always had their love and full support from the very beginning. Everyone rushes to the church to be purified by the live stream. Cloud comes to and everyone rejoices. The party and the children who were infected surround Cloud as he is reborn. He has purpose once more. And as he looks around and sees his friends, he sees Aerith and Zack in the back of the crowd saying one last goodbye. Aerith says, everything's all right. Cloud responds with, I know, I'm not alone. Earlier we had said that Avon Children's title was about the next generation of children to represent this world. In this instance, there's two meanings. For Genova and Sephiroth, their remnants represent their next generation of evil that Cloud and company will eventually have to defeat. But for the good of the planet, the literal children of Gaia represent the future, and the war of the livestream versus the Geostigma finally comes to an end. Our theme of forgiveness is pure for everyone in this situation. Zack and Aerith obviously forgive Cloud, Tifa Marlene and the rest of the party forgives Cloud, the planet forgives its people, and even Shinra wants forgiveness for what it did to the planet. Everything seems to be shaping up for our heroes and friends in Gaia. Yet there's one last story that exists in the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, one that surrounds one of the more interesting characters in the realm of Gaia, Vincent Valentine the Turk, or former Turk. So. Brace yourselves, folks. Final Fantasy VII Month comes to an end next week with the Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII. And for more Final Fantasy VII goodness, click here to check out our friend Matt Pat's game theory on Cloud's cross-dressing scene and what it says about video gaming's portrayal of the LGBT lifestyle.